Is there a seconder for the nomination by Ms. Mkalipi? I'll second. I'll second. Yes, Thank you. Second. The second. Is there any other nomination? In the First absence the of the other nominations, no. um, Ms. Teacher Lady, can you take the chair, please? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Shereen. Uh, colleagues, uh, you are all welcome to the meeting. And yeah, as they have indicated that the chair will join later. So we'll have to start our meeting and then she'll join while we are uh, uh, busy processing the issues. Uh, colleagues, uh, today we are meeting with the provincial government of Gauteng, Kota. Uh, to discuss issues of Mfulweni uh, municipality. We all know that uh, during our oversight, the committee did go to the municipality and there were a lot of issues which were raised that needs an urgent attention. And also when the department is presenting on the state of uh, Mfulweni, we'll also like some other issues to be highlighted on that presentation, such as the relationship between the provincial government and Salga, because it seems like there was no proper consultation when the municipality was uh, placed under section 139. And the other issues that also need to be taken into consideration, um, the lessons that uh, uh, has been learned from the process of uh, section 129, and also the issues of uh, the, the, the supply chain management in the municipality, uh, those are the issues that also need to, to be addressed uh, in the presentation. And then we also need to deal with the political, inter uh, political uh, uh, interest in the municipality. Is there an oversight? Are the politicians in the municipality playing an inter uh, oversight role in the municipality or are they interfering with the process of uh, administration? Those are the issues issues that will also need clarity on as this committee. And we'll also uh, indicate that uh, as much as the pro uh, province is going to present on the issues and the state of Mfuleni, but uh, they must also bear in mind that during the oversight that the committee has uh, engaged on when we were there at uh, Mfuleni, there were a lot of issues which were being raised. And so members, when they come to attend the meeting uh, this evening, they have a lot of issues that need to be addressed. Be able to get the responses that we need uh, as a follow-up meeting to the oversight that we have been uh, engaged on. So now, uh, colleagues, uh, I would uh, also like to acknowledge the presence of a uh, Houten Department of Cocta. Uh, I can see that we have the HOD uh, in our meeting. Uh, 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 is the MEC also present? Yes, I am. I only see the HOD. And yes, the I am. Yeah. Okay, and the MEC is uh, and the MEC Lebohamayle is also present. Uh, the members of the committee uh, who are present, I uh, can see that we have Honorable Mukalipi, uh, Mato. Uh, on participant list, uh, Honorable Hunevald, Honorable uh, Faith Mutambi, yeah, we'll join later. And, uh, and I don't know who are the members that I did not, but uh, on in our register will be able to see who and who did not and also acknowledge the presence of the yes honorable mkalipi yes i i saw your name and yeah. also acknowledge the additional level uh, they are also present and um uh, now we'll go to the items in our agenda uh, Shervin, do we have uh, apologies? Yeah. 
we have apologies from the minister. We have apologies from both deputy ministers that won't be able to make the meeting due to prior engagements. Yes, we do have apologies. We have apology from the minister and the two deputy ministers that had prior arrangements, so they won't be able to make the meeting. Also from Ms. Kaban Chaba, she is not well, as well as in Kosi Latuli. Uh, thank you. Uh, I also uh, uh, saw that in our participant list, we also have Salga. Uh, Comrade Stofile is also amongst us. So uh, without any waste of time, uh, colleagues, we'll start with our meeting. So I'm going to hand over to the MEC, uh, MEC Leboha Maile, to give us a presentation of the, 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 the state of Mfuleni uh, municipality. Uh, MEC Leboha Maile, the platform is yours. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Uh, I've got... I think some connectivity issues here uh, and I'm using my phone. So I hope I'm audible enough. So that's one problem. The other one is that I'm not well, I've got tons of, but uh, because I've missed a lot of meetings of the committee, I thought it's important that I must join. So for that reason, I'll then give the HOD to, to make a presentation. I will be in the meeting and I will, uh, then work with the HOD and his team in answering uh, the questions that will arise. Uh, is that fine, Chair? Yes, it is fine, uh, MEC. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, HOD, uh, can you please take us through? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, MEC, uh, the members of the committee. Chair and the members of the committee and uh, colleagues. Um, there's a presentation that we made on, uh, on Wednesday uh, when the portfolio committee visited uh, Mfuleni. Uh, we made a, a, a detailed presentation there. And uh, again, today we've been asked uh, to, to prepare a presentation. So what we have done, we have uh, we have prepared a very, very short presentation uh, which uh, supplements uh, the, the, the one that we made on Wednesday. So we are going to ask uh, uh, Mr. Nguepe, uh, who's one of the officials deployed uh, as part of uh, uh, the departmental uh, support yeah, program. Sure. Sure. Uh, support program to municipalities. Oh, Tobani, yes. uh, my apologies, uh, HOD. Uh, Mr. Tobani, you are disturbing the meeting. Can you please mute your microphone? You can proceed, uh, HOD. Yes. So, 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 uh, Chair, I'm saying the presentation that uh, we are going to make now must be read in conjunction with the presentation that we made on Wednesday. Because the instruction that we got uh, from the chair was that uh, today uh, we should make a, a presentation which attempts to respond to specific issues uh, which were not uh, concluded uh, on Wednesday. So we are going to ask uh, Mr. Mwepe, uh, who's part of a regional team that is deployed uh, in Mfuleni, that the, the, this is part of our strategy, or this is a part of our approach as COCTA to deploy uh, senior officials across the municipalities uh, 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 in Halteng. So Mr. Mwepe is going to take us through uh, those issues. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, uh, Chair, uh, Honorable Chair, thanks, uh, Honorable Members, and um, yeah. Let me see. Good evening, um, HOD and colleagues from COCTA. 
Um, uh, I'm telling myself that uh, the uh, presentation is on the screen. I'll go to slideshow. Yeah, as, as HOD indicated, the presentation is um, uh, actually as a result of the discussions that took place uh, on Wednesday and, and today's mainly sort of trying to get to the issues that were raised by members uh, in, in the previous session. The, the purpose um, of the presentation is just to give a, a, a bit of progress on what has been achieved on the refocused uh, intervention. Um, uh, members are very, very much aware of the Section 139 in the terms of reference of the uh, previous administrator, the current administrator. Um, and we're saying in this slide that um, the current administrator is focusing only on the two, on the three um, uh, functions, which is uh, supply chain management, uh, finance, uh, infrastructure, and service delivery. Um, uh, this background won't read. I think it, it actually had uh, been uh, part of the previous um, uh, presentation. Uh, as indicated in our presentation also, we, in terms of reviving some of the work, which is related mainly to the FRP, mm -hmm. uh, is the uh, five work streams that, that, that have been resuscitated from what had actually happened previously. And, um, and, and this slide shows those work streams and their focus areas. Uh, we've got finance, ma financial management, basic services delivery, governance and institutional, communication stakeholder, and implementation of uh, human settlement uh, mega projects. Um, and this was uh, done in terms of uh, trying to stabilize the municipality and make sure that it meets its obligations to provide basic services uh, and support the municipality to become viable and sustainable in the medium to long term. Um, then what follows is some of the um, uh, areas that had been raised in the previous meeting. Um, uh, that that the, the committee would wanted wanted to have additional information and clarity on. Um, uh, so we we uh, just to demonstrate what somehow what the, what the difference between the previous uh, intervention and the uh, this intervention that is now proceeding as we say it's refocused. What is it that it actually has so, sort of changed? The um, current administrator, lead administrator, has been appointed now along with three team administrators. Um, and the, as, as I indicated, work streams have been uh, resuscitated. And, and these work streams are chaired by the municipal EDs. Uh, and these, they, they convene weekly on Tuesdays. And the work that comes from these work streams then go to MACO and, and, and MEC uh, sessions which convenes on Thursdays weekly, receiving reports from the, from the work streams. Um, and then the, the FRP uh, meeting also convenes on Mondays, um, uh, where all the work that is supposed to happen on the FRP is then reviewed. Uh, and also it follows through, it will then be tabled to the MACO and MEC sessions on, on Thursday. We also uh, uh, prepare monthly reports that um, will ultimately go to EXCO, the Minister and COP, Salvia and GPL. And I think um, here we have uh, two reports already. Is um, the, the one report is just awaiting sign off before it goes to the other offices, Office of the Minister, the NCOP and, and uh, FGPL. It just needs to go through EXCO for it to um, um, have been sanctioned there and, and then it will uh, follow through to the other uh, entities. Um, the coming few slides just talks to the work that happens in the uh, work stream. Um, and the, and uh, here, we, uh, just high level summary in terms of what happens under the um, uh, one work, all these work streams. The revenue enhancement, there is a comprehensive plan developed. Um, and then there's a re for revenue management, uh, there are procedures and control documents received. Uh, already in September that um, uh, have been dealt with uh, and have, have gone through to, to council on, on supply chain, um, the work streams and, and through the municipalities work through the processes uh, that has now been centralized. Um, and then there's the establishment and composition of the interim bid committees 
which has been finalized and um, the, the whole process is actually sup supported by the uh, Treasury Financial Advisor uh, from, uh, from National Treasury and Provincial Treasury also sits in these uh, sessions. Financial viability and management, uh, all budget related policies were reviewed. Uh, municipality is also resolving a, a lot of issues on their unfunded budget. Um, and we've also started working on cost reflective tariffs. Um, the municipality is in the process of finalizing uh, budget adjustment and, and uh, uh, revised procurement plans. And I think in the slides below, we begin to indicate on, I mean, talk to specific issues that relate to the matters that were raised uh, by the, uh, the committee. Governance and institutional management, dealing with the outstanding labor disputes and some of the litigation cases, uh, basic service delivery and urban management. We had challenges with um, uh, MIC, uh, the, the whole suit of uh, infrastructure grants where the municipality is actually was actually struggling to spend, um, and those are being resolved. And I think the slides that follow uh, uh, begin to talk to that. This is the communication and stakeholder engagement uh, work stream uh, summary of the work they did. Then human settlements, um, issues of uh, daily land invasions and occupation, and there is a plan in place that, that talks to that. Disruption of project uh, uh, construction in, uh, not just in Sibuking Extension 20, but a whole host of other projects that have been brought to a hold by communities um, and, and the communication stakeholder engagement sort of deals with some of these issues in, in their interaction. Um, the one aspect that uh, also sort of came up was uh, in, in, in the Wednesday meeting was um, what, what are the re really what are the what are the steps now that you've given us what is happening, what are the next steps in terms of the refocused re intervention? Under supply chain, uh, we're indicating the procurement plan was developed. Uh, the bid evaluation and adjudication uh, committees have been constituted from within the city and district. And this is because there is a huge backlog of uh, bids that needs to be attended to. Um, uh, here we, we have the 44 bids that are actually awaiting um, the evaluation. And in terms of um, the assessment, it is, in, it is, it is Currently, no need to take a bit a bit longer to to deal with this. Um, but there are now additional measures to actually increase the number um, of of bid committees to try and and speed up the process so that the pro all the projects that are uh, now hanging can actually go into implementation. Uh, issues on um, uh, litigation cases and labor matters. Um, uh, all those the, the reports were, were actually tabled and approved. Um, and um, uh, uh, 14 cases uh, were reviewed and, and nine are due for settlement and the remaining five are to follow prescribed labor, labor, labor law. So it means the whole, the law should actually um, uh, take, take its course in terms of all the other processes that must be followed until the cases are, are concluded. Then there is also um, uh, the legal subcommittee that has been established to address amongst other matters uh, the Cape Gate um, uh, electricity tariffs application. And then there's also an issue, just to mention, but a few, we didn't want to bring all of them in here. Uh, application to NASA to revoke the electricity license of ELM by some of the consumers in the municipality. Um, assessing on, 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 on assessing contractual obligations and addressing fraudulent, irregular, and uh, authorized, unauthorized contracts. There's the matter of the opulentia short-term insurance contract, which is uh, uh, currently um, uh, we're, the, we're working with the municipality considering the legal implications before termination of the contract. But the principal uh, agreement is that the contract needs to be um, uh, terminated. We just need to be careful because they can come back as, uh, as, as litigation. Um, the court application by BX, uh, BX, uh, BXC or lay uh, this matter is um, being referred to council for, for a decision, um, a critical issue to deal with. And then uh, these are some of the cases on fraud and corruption, the steps that are actually being uh, had been taken um, uh, 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 relates to the issues that um, uh, the misconduct that was there and, and what actually informed 
the decisions. So these are the actions that are being taken against by the municipality with COCTA and, 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 and the multidisciplinary team from the respective uh, GPG departments in, in, in supporting the municipality to resolve them. Then um, as part of uh, addressing um, uh, revenue enhancement, and this is just a few things that, that, that are happening, but there is, there is a lot more in terms of the revenue um, uh, enhancement strategy that has been put in, in, in place. Um, so we're working also with the DBSA, Rainwater, um, GIFA, a housing funding agency to source funds for the municipality to actually deal with this um, uh, water, uh, non-revenue water. And, and there are also initiatives with electricity losses that are underway. Um, uh, with regards to the sewer uh, spillages, the Val River pollution, um, uh, we would know that the department uh, water and sanitation actually terminated the contract that was there. And, and they are currently uh, uh, processing um, in supply chain. Um, that's where the state, stage of the work is uh, for the appointment of the new uh, implementing agent. But they are, they've also allocated about five engineers over and above um, the other support that comes from MISA and ourselves. There are five engineers stationed at MISI Aliba offices that are providing additional um, support to, uh, to the municipality on, on these issues. And, and also there are a couple of projects um, um, that are going to be resolved as part of the process of the 44 in terms of the outstanding bids and which projects are directly linked to the Val River pollution. Um, on, on, the two, on these three areas, uh, the appointment of uh, outstanding senior managers, we say all of them have been uh, appointed. Um, the latest appointment was the Executive Infrastructure Planning and Development who will actually remove, resume his duties on the 1st of November. And then, then will be the one post that's uh, gone out on advert and will be filled um, in, in, the, in the near future. Um, in terms of implementing the tools of effective uh, public participation, I think uh, an issue that the committee had raised with regards to um, how do we then address the public, the, uh, the, uh, protests from communities and um, the municipality working with ourselves in terms of various platforms will, which we utilize to communicate um, uh, and through even the adopted, uh, to ad the adopted budget and, and the IDP. And, and these are the platforms, the radio, the website, um, and uh, we have some of the, uh, team the team administrators that also are beginning to interact extensively with communities with regards to issues of services where they are actually um, uh, uh, leading. Failure to pass the approved uh, funded budgets. Um, uh, work is actually happening there. There is a budgeted monitoring committee which has developed a creditors uh, prioritization framework and, and, and um, ensuring that expenditure is uh, just approved. So what, what has happened even with some of the infrastructure projects because of the We can't hear the presenter, Chair. I thought it's me. Chairperson. Honorable Mukalipi. Yes, Chair. Yeah. There's no presenter. We lost the presentation when he was talking about infrastructure. On a very interesting. Uh, HOG, where is the presenter? Yes. Uh, we're HOG? Trying, sir, we're trying to locate him uh, if he's able to join. If he can't, uh, we'll uh, proceed okay. and conclude uh, on, the, on the presentation. Yeah, we'll give you two minutes to try to locate the presenter. If you are unable to get a hold of the presenter, then you can proceed with the uh, presentation from the area where you are speaking about the infrastructure. Uh, thank you, HOD.
the network has been bad. I think your email. Okay. Uh, I, I, I now, I, um, um, am, am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you. No, we can't hear you. You can't hear me. Uh, yes, please. Yes. No. No, what's cooking here? Che? You, Ted? No. Uh, HOD, can you please do the presentation? Because we uh, are running out of time. Uh, but I don't see it uh, on the screen. Sherin, uh, 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 can you please uh, share the presentation? Sure. I, or do, I you, do you have the co-hosting right? Uh, if you have, you can share it from your site. Uh, no. Sherin? I, I don't have a copy of this specific presentation. Uh, can, well, can, uh, is it possible that you can uh, make the HOD a co-host so that he can be able to share the presentation on the screen? Can you please fix it with him so that we proceed with the meeting? Uh, that's Mr. Weber. Mr. Weber has joined again. Chair, Chair okay. uh, members, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, apologies about that. I, I normally don't experience this type of uh, challenges where I am. Uh, yeah, I we lost you while you were on uh, slide number 19. Can you please start from uh, slide number 19? Th thanks, Chair. I was uh, worried in terms of where... Uh, Mr. Mope? Uh, um, Chair, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm saying we lost you when you were on flight number 19. Can you please start on flight oh, number 19? Okay. Yes, oh. I can hear you. Oh, thanks, Chair. Yeah, I was, uh, um, let me go. Yeah, you hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I've, I've clearly heard you, Chair. Okay, I'm, you, I'm can, you can slide proceed 19. with the presentation. Yes, that's um, slide 19. Um, I was just talking about the the feeling of this uh, senior management post and that all of them are filled in the latest appointment is the infrastructure planning and development uh, executive director with the one post of the audit executive director post uh, which has been advertised and uh, as mentioned that the municipality uh, has worked on its stakeholder management process plan which is which is actually championed by the office of the um, mayor and, and even some of the um, lead, lead, lead administrators in terms of interacting with communities where there are, there are specific issues that relate to their areas. Uh, they're engaging with these, with, with these uh, consumers quite extensively. Uh, in terms of the um, uh, approved budget which is funded, um, the, the, there's a committee which has been put in place with monitoring controls and um, uh, it has developed creditors privatization framework. Um, and on the next slide, we're just referring uh, chat to the incomplete and abandoned infrastructure projects. Um, we, we have worked on a list of projects which has assessed the, both the financial and uh, service delivery impact of these projects. And some of these projects are then now being fast tracked through the established bid committees as, as part of the remedial measure to get them up and up and going. Um, uh, and and uh, as part of monitoring and making sure that we keep up with the, dealing with the issues we, in the municipality, a service delivery uh, war room has been established, which is constituted by the different uh, departments within the municipality so that they start talking to each other in terms of those uh, issues. Um, yeah, this is um, the, the last slide, we're just saying, uh, no, take note of the progress achieved of the refocused intervention. Um, and that um, uh, also chair and, and members that the, the whole work that we're presenting here is something that is um, uh, supported by the, uh, led by the lead administrator, supported by his team administrators, uh, everyone in the municipality, the executive mayor, the municipal manager. And, and on, on Thursdays, every week, a session takes place with the MEC where the progress is delivered on the program of action 
um, in the financial recovery plan, and we've also worked on a six months turnaround plan. And, and all of these other uh, activities here are um, uh, contributing to that six months turnaround plan. Um, thanks, Chair. Am I disconnected again? You are not disconnected. You can hear you. Jefferson. Okay. No, it was just quiet. My apologies. Yes, so I got worried that I'm disconnected. No, you are not. I think it's the chair was a problem. Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Mukalipi. The network on my site is very bad. I don't know what is the problem. Uh, thank you, HOD, for the presentation. Uh, now we are going to uh, give uh, Salga if they have anything to say. And after Salga, we'll then open the floor for, 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 for discussion. Salga? Uh, good evening, Chairperson. Good evening, Tate. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Chairperson. Say Anon Khase here from Salga. Uh, Chairperson, I think, uh, like the HOD indicated and other colleagues, we've already made a presentation earlier on. Um, we don't have anything else to add uh, this evening. Thank you very much. We'll take questions when they do come through. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Salga. And now we're going to give the DG of Cocta, a DG of DCOC. Uh, good evening, Honorable Chairperson, and good evening to all the uh, honorable members uh, here this evening. Uh, just in terms of our, our presentation, Sorry, just in terms of our presentation, I would then ask our team to then take the lead on it. Thank you, Chair. I'm joined by a number of our team members. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you, DJ. So you say you are going to delegate somebody to present? Yes. Okay, it's fine. The person can present. Who's presenting, Rufus? Yeah, yeah he wants to say, yeah. Is he knowing that he's going to say? I'm trying to load it. Uh, good evening, Chairperson. Uh, DG, can the presenter load the presentation so that he or she can start with the presentation? Okay, uh, thank you, Chairperson. It's great. The presentation is going to be done by Clive Maduna, and I, it has been put up. Thank you, Chair, and apologies for the delay. Um, good evening, Chairperson, and the honorable members of the Portfolio Committee, um, the political leadership here present, and, and the colleagues. Um, I think based on the discussions earlier on, we had uh, not anticipated necessarily giving a presentation because I think it's going to be a repetition of what has already been uh, presented. In fact, uh, in the previous discussions, we had touched on a whole lot of some of these issues, which would not want to, uh, to repeat, except to just comment briefly on some of the issues that has been, had been raised. And perhaps I'll go into some areas in the presentation itself but reflect more on what has just been uh, presented, if you may, I may uh, quickly, uh, Chairperson. I, I think the one we point before I go into the presentation itself is that we, we, we have not at least um, interacted intimately with the details of the new plan. And I say new plan was this reference to a previous inter intervention. And therefore, the assumption is that there could have been some tweeting in the municipal financial recovery plan 
in the extension of this intervention now. Uh, suffice to say that some of the details of the current plan do inspire some confidence. And we must just say in the outset that our challenge with the influence from this intervention from the start in 2018, and this has been um, captured in the report that we had given to the NCOP prior to its uh, to the NCOP even um, approving the intervention, were about the implementation of the intervention itself, uh, which we had uh, engaged the provincial copter extensively. Uh, with the then minister uh, on several occasions, even at the technical level. So I think uh, listening to the presentation now, including the meeting which we had with the province on Monday, um, we do uh, get a sense that there is a lot of uh, uh, improvements that have been made in the implementation of the uh, intervention, given that it's a legal instrument and therefore we, we need to be found on the uh, right side of the uh, legality in the uh, implementation. Part of the challenges which we, we also highlighted previously with the intervention um, in the last two years was around the coordination of the entire intervention, where we've seen, for instance, your sanitation intervention, we're running parallel to the entire 139 intervention. Um, and I think in the presentation itself, even now, there's less um, uh, mention of the sanitation driven intervention. So your, your value intervention, which I think it's, it's, it's an area which we may still need to close so that everything else that happens in Mfulain happens within this intervention and there's this control um, um, and coordination and, 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 and uh, that everything else um, uh, is in sync. There are still areas which uh, I think we had discussed extensively in the previous uh, uh, meetings between the portfolio committee and the Mfulain, including the province around the litigations, which have been um, uh, spoken to now uh, and would really need to, to, to really focus on that as well so that uh, we stop the municipality from pleading uh, financially. Part of what Minister at the time had included in the con concurrence letters, part of the conditions were around the program of engaging extensively the community in terms of explaining what this intervention is about and, and how it's going to benefit the municipality and the communities moving forward. And I think there's reference to some program which has been uh, developed and, and that I think uh, assists a great deal. The one other factor was around the relationship, the municipality, the relationship between the municipality itself and the stakeholders, and in the main, the business forums and so on, which at the time would engage, but I think uh, in the previous uh, uh, period, uh, they were seen to be, the, the, we noticed that uh, that part it was not closed properly to the effect that we still um, even recently received ministry um, uh, uh, issues about uh, at that uh, point. Uh, we've discussed some of the technical or administrative things that would need to close between ourselves and the province and this around the reporting. Even NCOP uh, in the last uh, instance had raised the similar issues. Uh, and we know that there are reports that have been, are being processed currently and we appreciate that and would moving forward uh, had agreed with the ad chief administrator that we would then ensure that these reports uh, find um, their route to both the NCOP um, and the minister. We, we, think, we, do, we think though that there still needs to be some emphasis, at least uh, in terms of the dependencies, the sequencing and so on. So if you talk about every, having everyone support the intervention and rally behind this intervention to deal with the softer issues, which uh, in the eyes of the communities and everyone else will be affected uh, uh, by by the, the collapse in Mfulen would need to be uh, prioritized. And these are issues about uh, urban management. Uh, if people are to pay for services and all of that, would they need to see the tangibles that have been done by the municipality so that they encourage themselves to pay for the services. And it's not limited to urban management, uh, but it's the whole plan around sequencing of the intervention and really looking at the dependencies that will make sure that we do uh, ensure that these soft the tangibles that people will see and be encouraged um, uh, we, we need to do. The, 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 the one area is around consequence management. And I think we've spoken about this even in the previous meeting, uh, Chairperson, uh, because if you want to break the cultures that emerged um, at the time when the institution had collapsed internally, we'd need to deal with consequence management so that we send the message that uh, the institution is being restored and that everyone needs to toe the line in terms of the applicable 
um, uh, uh, legislations, policies, and so on. So we do think that that's the method needs to be highlighted, and the communication around that needs to be to 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 uh, to really ensure that we we, we speak to those things. Um, perhaps the last one uh, is an emphasis, uh, Chairperson, and the portfolio committee members. It's just around tying the, the the loose end around ensuring that the sanitation intervention, which is driven by the National uh, Department of Sanitation, yeah. uh, is really uh, aligned to the work that we do. So. For instance, if you look at some of the work that we make would be funding relates to intervention. So how to ensure that as the sanitation department nationally um, intervenes in terms of the, um, the VAL intervention, the sanitation intervention, but there's also linkages about the work that uh, uh, the municipality through the MIC and other uh, funding uh, mechanisms would, would find the um, alignment. Um, Chairperson, the just on the ttm progress i think that's what we would focus on now we had engaged uh, with the C, with the district already and i don't think the last uh, engagements were with the um, mayors present in the meeting um, and we are just uh, going to be finalizing expedite uh, the process in terms of engaging extensively now on the profile which had already presented to the district uh, which will then culminate into the development of the of the one plan moving forward and uh, some work has already been done we are just going to be tying the loose ends uh, together with the province around how we're going to be uh, frustrating this part uh, chairperson um, that is uh, uh, in short um, the issues that we would like to raise thank you very much I think in that day, I can see that the chairperson is back. So now I'm going to hand over to Comrade Faith to continue with the meeting. Thank you, Chairperson, Madam Chairperson. Can we see a show of hands of colleagues who want to interact with the presentation? Colleagues, Kaiser, uh, Chairperson, Hello, only the two for now. I, I I know the Chairperson, the other Chairperson is still taking a deep breath. She's gonna come after you, Honorable Crew. Can we start in that order? Honorable Kaiser. Yes, I'm coming, Chair. Just give me a second. I'm just first. Okay. Uh, give me something together here. Okay, Chair. Thank you very much for that. Uh, just, just on how will the the province ensure that this municipality has uh, is 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 recovering and also is improving on the following issues uh, because uh, chair uh, honorable hussein always told talk to uh, say say talk about uh, the the basket issues and I think this is the condition here that we're facing. And uh, can the province just assist us in terms of how will it uh, ensure the improvement? Because some of the things here are really uh, leaving a lot to be desired, Chairperson. We have met with the, with the municipality and we have gone to the municipality, but some of the things have not really come out. Uh, strongly, you know. Um, there is a problem with a first and foremost the fact that the municipality uh, 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 has a mayor that has lied to the council in terms of uh, the, the section one one thirty nine. 
uh, that he has promised that it will be lifted on the 4th of November 2019. And when the, when the, when the council and, 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 uh, and, and, and EFF councillors, which I've been engaging on, has asked him, he then changes the statement again to say, no, I didn't mean that uh, it will be lifted. Uh, when they first asked him, are you sure that you are going to, to lift the, 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 the section one, 139B by this period? He says, no, I commit. And then when they ask him again uh, later on, then he then says, no, but I didn't say that. I said that uh, uh, there are systems in place which have failed. Now you can see, Chepesi, right there, that uh, something is, is terribly wrong. Something is, is, is gravely wrong here. Uh, someone is remote controlling this person. Uh, somewhere, uh, either politically uh, or otherwise. But I have a sense that uh, uh, there is political interference in terms of what the mayor uh, says or what he doesn't say. And I do not know how is this going to be fixed because uh, there are a lot of people that have been implicated along uh, this, this, this particular issue. Uh, and the fact that the MMC of infrastructure, who is an acting mayor now, uh, Ms. Katie Wendombela, has not given since since she she she, she was she was in uh, MMC of infrastructure has not given has not has not given a report uh, uh, the, the council a report, uh, and 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 then he he is now a a, a an acting mayor, and then she goes on and and. And just after, a, just because the CFO said something along the lines of, 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 of projects that were ruined uh, from eight years ago, to something to that extent, she goes to Mr. Shabalala, who is a, who is a policeman somewhere there, to say that uh, after being advised by the, by, by, by the, by Mr. Shabalala, that there's no case here. He says that the CFO uh, must just be arrested just to, to, to embarrass him. Uh, uh, you can see that this person is not used to being held to account. So that questions uh, the, 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 the capacity then of the, of the impact of that particular uh, 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 municipality. Are they at To, to, to the colleagues, can you hear Honorable Plaza or it's only me? Colleagues? No, we can't, uh, Chair. We can't hear you, Chair. I, I suspect he's frozen. Can yes, we, we then can. allow? Honorable so to proceed. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, thank okay. you. So, no, Honorable so hold it a bit, he's back. Honorable Leza, proceed. Honorable Leza. He left. Honorable Tlou, can you proceed now? Honorable okay. uh, Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. I am in Dark City, Chaperson Lord Shedin. Oh. Yes. Sorry about that. Okay. My audible now. Thank you, Chaperson. Let's hold a bit. You will come after my talk. Honorable okay. Thank you, Chaperson. Honorable Chaperson. Let me firstly welcome uh, the presentation by the M uh, HOD from the Gauteng province and also uh, commending the MEC for local government, uh, MEC Leboha Maile, even if he's not well, but he's here with us. 
coming to check whether the work is done or not. And we also welcome his team for, for their intervention and support for road to recovery in that municipality. We commend you for your obligation to enhance effective performance of municipality and building a good foundation for the municipality to improve, to perform their work very well and implement uh, intervention made by the province. Mostly, uh, you have uh, your key challenges were about the issue of uh, the finance that uh, you, you, um, the municipality didn't perform well or didn't have a, a financial health. So the, the MPEC investigates reports and also they found out that uh, there was uh, an unauthorized, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And you come up with the financial, can you hear me, sir? Yes, so well. F financial uh, recovery on rather you are, you come up with a very key focus on strengthening governance to receive, um, you know, quarterly reports from those municipalities to see whether your intervention is working or not. But uh, what I'm asking from you, Emission, the HOD, are they complying with what you have asked them to do? Because your objectives was to strengthen their, the, 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 the governance. And the issue of lack of uh, proper oversight ruled by res respective municipalities. Did you see any improvement after your engagement uh, with that municipalities? And then another one, the lack of control of inadequate control over daily and monthly processes. And then did you see any improvement after your intervention for them to improve? And then the issue of failure of, of municipality to implement the tools for effective public participation. Is there any effective mechanism that we are going, you are going to give to them so that they can improve or, or, or on the issue that they are not doing well? And another thing that I'm really very happy for, the, for your intervention is the issue of taking the councillors for training, the councillors and the official for training to, you know, to have a good governance, accountability and ethical contact. This is what we are there for as politicians. Did you, did you yield any good results or progress after training them? And then uh, the, uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, revenue, how much, how much, how much did you collect? How much did they collect their revenue monthly? And another question is all about, ah, MEC Maile Sham, you are doing well. You are doing well. You are involvement in the municipalities in counting. I see now you are responsible to going to be, uh, to, 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 to yield a positive, uh, answers because at the end of the day if the municipality is failing no accountability unauthorized expenditure irregular expenditure fruitless and wasteful expenditure and then we stand up and say this is our province and i'm going to make sure that people will start implementing well done thank you thank you honorable Clo. Can I request Honorable Brink to come in before Honorable Ecclesa? Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, you must advise me whether I should switch off my video. 
because so of the far, internet so connection. So, so far, far so, so good. good. Okay. You seem to be able okay. to proper internet connection. Yes, finally, Chair, uh, but it might go away. Um, Chair, it's clear that Mfuleni is a deeply dysfunctional municipality. In fact, probably the worst in Gauteng by objective measures. Uh, but it's not just a dysfunctional municipality, it's, it's also a dysfunctional intervention uh, since 2018. And it's clear that there wasn't a new intervention it's the same intervention that was confirmed to us when we went on oversight visit to Mfuleni the week before last. Now, Chair, recently, as, as you know, default judgment in the amount of 482 million rand was taken against Mfuleni by a service provider called BCX. Uh, they then attached the municipality's main bank account and the balance of 50 million rand that was there. But of course, that still leaves a massive uh, uh, judgment debt that can be satisfied or can only be satisfied by attaching more of the assets of Mfuleni, including its other bank accounts, the details of which were revealed as well uh, on our oversight visit. So, Mfuleni is in a serious cash flow crunch. Uh, and, you know, other creditors of the municipality, including ESCOM and Randwater, must be looking to see what is happening now, whether they should take the same action as this creditor called BCX and start attaching uh, municipal assets. It is a deeply problematic situation. And in fact, uh, Mfuleni might be one of the first municipalities that completely goes bankrupt uh, after a financial recovery plan has been implemented and while under administration. Now, Chair, the, the question that arose last week, on uh, the week before last on oversight visit to Mfuleni, was when did the MEC, MEC Maile, find out about the default judgment taken against the municipality, the 482 million rand in March already. And there were further court processes in June. And the answer by the COGTA HOD and Gauteng came back. The MEC only found out about the default judgment after, it, uh, it, uh, after the bank account was attached, which is stupendous. Uh, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that such a massive legal dispute preceded by letters of demand and so forth didn't come to the attention of the MEC responsible for local government advising the provincial executive of the state of intervention and who apparently meets uh, with the administrators on a weekly basis. Um, my question, quite simply, Chairperson, to MEC Maile is, is he asleep at the wheel? Uh, and what is he going to do to stop Mfuleni's creditors from carrying away this municipality piece by piece? Thanks very much. Thank you, Honorable Brink. Can I ask Honorable Plaza to come back? Honorable Plaza. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, today, I think we are go I'm going to have a problem with the uh, network and things like that. So I will chase straight to the questions so that I don't spend time on numbers and things like that. So my first question will be, uh, can, 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 can the, the, the Gauteng uh, province uh, give us a sense as to how will the municipality be viable if supply chain manager is untouchable, such that the mayor and all MECs, MMCs are in his pocket, uh, because there's a problem in there uh, in terms of uh, 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 the, the, the interference and, and, and so forth. Just uh, how will it improve 
the the GOD. Because currently, Chair, we are facing with the we were faced with the gender-based violence uh, issues in, in society. And GOD is not sitting in that municipality uh, okay. since 2016. So how are, how are they going to improve that situation? Just, just to tell us, uh, to give us a sense on that. And then, And, and 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 how are they going to improve uh, spoke about the empowerment of councillors uh, how are they going to improve uh, councillor who calls the the corporate uh, the, the the corporate service uh, uh, committee just 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 for these two purposes only Jay. Uh, one being to announce the the christmas holidays and two in january to announce the, the the upper limits uh, is that committee uh, meant for that uh, and i also ask about whether uh, we are going to see a, a, a functional impact in that municipality and how so what are the relevant details in terms of uh, what 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 we should see in terms of the functionality of of the impacts because currently it doesn't inspire confidence. When we were there, there's, there's no confidence inspired at all uh, about the functionality of that uh, to hold the executive. Nobody goes to that to that uh, to that committee at all. So, uh, Chair, I think I think uh, for now, let me just. Uh, uh, summarize and because uh, yeah, I could go off now. If if uh, it, it stabilizes, then I have a lot of questions, Chair. I have a lot of them uh, in terms of you'll, what are, you, you'll come, what you'll are come the in the next round of the MM and so forth, because the MM is said to to have no 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 requisite skills. How, how, proceed. How. Proceed, yes. Honorable Lazar. Proceed. Yes. yes, yes, Chair. Proceed. Sure. What are the qualifications of the MM and uh, how do you uh, uh, um, employ an MM that does not have skills? I don't understand how the municipality will, will be functional, will to, to yield uh, positive results as, as this committee uh, wishes. Uh, to that municipalities. Uh, 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 and then uh, how are we to see the, the corporates and parastatals uh, paying that municipality such that it pays uh, the, the debt uh, to, to, to ESCO? Uh, and then if, if you suspend someone on Friday and then he comes back on Monday, Uh, and then after that, nothing happens. I I suspend someone. Uh, surely uh, there must be consequences for what he was suspended for. And in this municipality, we have not seen consequences at all. So it's a it's a very 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 dysfunctional municipality, and 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 there there needs to be uh, not just. To, re to come and report to the committee and, and how rosy a picture is to give us the time frames as to how and when are these things are going to really have been going on for ancient by Honorable Claesam, he is frozen. Colleagues, is it only on my side or? Yeah, that's he is just frozen. 
Claro, mbile ya mbile. Sipote zayo. I'm tired of calling you to order time and again with your logging in. It's not happening for the first time. Can you log in quietly than doing what you're doing? It's very disruptive. Uh, Honorable Kleiser, uh, it's frozen. Uh, Are you back? Honorable Kleiser? No, we are battling to hear you. I think I'll give you an. You are muted. Unmute the microphone, Honorable Kleiser. As the council resolution qualifications include. Can you re reason. repeat your previous question? So no. Can you repeat it? Yes, Chair. You are back, uh, but you must repeat your question. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, my question relates to the fact that, uh, that the mayor, there is no consequence management for the for the MM as per the council resolution and. The, and the, the mayor can 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 the province just just uh, brings bring bring us to speed and who uh, must must uh, then, Swear in the, yeah. the, the, the by, by the MM and 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 so forth. How 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 are that are controlled politically in that uh, people are being controlled politically and and so forth. And emotional actually couldn't produce uh, the the needs to be heard uh, by that uh, regard. Thank you. Okay. Can you write on the chat group your last question um, because you were disrupted? Ne? If you can write it on the chat group or in the group, I'll again raise it with the team and the MEC. Can I ask Honorable Direko to come in? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I don't have much questions because my colleagues have already covered. However, when you listen to the, uh, the presentation of the municipality and some other information that we get as activists on our own rights, in the municipality there's an element of a, a political interference. So I just want to check with the province, how are they uh, going to deal with such issues in the municipality because where there are political interference there's also a political situation and then uh, secondly chair uh, at some point the municipal bank account so i just want to check what were the reasons behind that how was it resolved and how did they come up with plans that the, the that history does not repeat itself and also how is the financial status of the municipality? We will also want to uh, to check with them what are the lessons uh, that they have learned from the intervention in this municipality. Uh, and there was an, a, a newspaper article lately this year where it was speaking about Mfulweni municipality and the heading of the uh, 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 that article was saying Mfulweni officials implicated in a more than 870 million uh, looting spree, but no action has been taken. So how true is this uh, article? And if it's true, why is it that uh, no action is taken? When you go through the article, it's indicated that municipality has lost uh, this uh, large amount of money uh, as a result of irregular expenditures, uh, for violation of a uh, municipal finance act, a uh, duplication of payments and stuff like that. So hence, I want to check what is it, what measures do they have in place for financial recovery and also consequence management? And Chair, 
I also want to check uh, how is the relationship between the uh, provincial uh, department and Salga. The reason why I'm asking is because uh, when the intervention was, uh, it was uh, when the decision to take a, to place this municipality under uh, administration, apparently there was no proper consultation between the two. Uh, and also, if that's the case, I would also uh, seek clarity on that matter. Uh, uh, that, that's all, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Director. On my, my side, I've got some few issues that I need to raise. Uh, you know, when we visited the municipality, uh, we couldn't hold the meeting at the municipality itself. We had to move to the district due to some community unrest in the municipality. Uh, I hope the MEC is aware that there is a worrying level of public discontent in the municipality. Then the other issue that is at the heart of this content is the series of intervention by the provincial executive, in particular, the intervention preceding the current one. It began with the resolution of 5 February 2019, where EXCO approved the appointment of Mr. Opankwana to implement Section 139.1b intervention on behalf of the provincial government in its capacity as acting MM. Colleagues will also recall that some of us were at loss as to why it took the department almost two years to realize that the appointment of the administrators was done incorrectly. Then um, we also learned as a committee that uh, the province and national had disagreed as to whether they should have been an administrator in the first place since section 139.1b was not explicit on this. The fact that this also happened between the two spheres of government responsible for cooperative governance is also regrettable. And I want the department's comment, the DG's comment on this one. Then the issue that was raised by Honorable Jereko also that uh, the law is very precise with regard to consultation of SALGA, including uh, uh, the recovery plan. This is a reality MEC that your administrators also admitted. Even some of the employees of the municipality and the unions, as we interacted with them, they claimed to know nothing about the financial recovery plan. Uh, Salga was also not private to the quarterly progress report as uh, required by legislation. The MFMA in particular envisaged that Salga will receive this quarterly progress report and that there will be consultation with the association prior to the finalization of a financial recovery plan. Maybe the MEC, even on the current one, must tell us why these basic uh, legislative requirements were not uh, actually met. We, we are concerned of the fact that the lack of consultation with a uh, Salga on Infulene is not also an isolated incident because this also happened in Tswane MEC, despite that the fact that uh, the provincial government is disputing it. To us as a committee MEC, this suggests an IGR system that has broken down completely and raises question around the capacity of the provincial culture to foster cooperate governance in line with its given mandate. The colleagues have also raised the issue of the default judgment against the municipality, which is to us also it's a financially catastrophic. It is very curious that almost everyone in the municipality claims that they have learned this uh, from the media. The fact that this all happened MEC while the municipality was under intervention does not inspire confidence in the efficacy of the administration team. And we'd like to hear your comment on this uh, uh, MEC. We, we should also raise this concern with you, MEC, that the intervention experience of Mfubeni is worrying because it also portrays a disturbing trend where COCTA 
and its appointment of administrators is now becoming part of the problem rather than the solution. We, this, this is not happening. We also experienced this while we in Kazul Natala, where the mayor of Mpofana literally pointed an accusing finger to one of the provincial copter officials. Then this problem, I think, MEC, it needs urgent attention. And then yourself as MEC, you must assist this, this committee in this regard. Uh, so the issue that uh, we are raising today, MEC, we want you to take this matter seriously because uh, this is a matter of not non-compliance with the actual intervention itself. So those are the issues that we would love you, you to comment on that one. Because the other issue as well, we have learned reports that post our oversight visit, one of your administrators, I think her name is, uh, the one that is dealing with SCM, she's a lady, I, re, I think if I'm not mistaken, her name is Tilly, if I re, remember her so well. Since I, because you have raised how things were so wrong in that municipality, we are told she became a subject matter of the mayoral committee. So then what I'm trying to say here, MEC, we want your honest and frank uh, response on this matter, whether you're getting the necessary cooperation from the municipality or is this is a tug of war? Because a lot of things are also happening while the administrators are there. So the other issue is in relation to all these incomplete projects that are there, it's massive. Projects of influence we don't get finished. Consequence of that thereafter is that then is the communities that are suffering that can't then get the services. And then I think it's a very serious matter of concern to all of us. With this view, I will, uh, I will then hand over to you, MEC, and the team to respond. My chair. Uh, thank you. Before the MEC chair. Sorry, Mkalipi, come in. Thank you, Chair. I'm sorry I had a, bad, a very bad network here. So that's why uh, I have to come after you, Chair. But I know in terms of the protocol that I must not come after the chairperson. Uh, sorry, MEC, I was uh, uh, not uh, meant to while you are responding. But I want just to add on one point that the Chair was uh, just emphasizing on the last point that she made about the unfinished projects. And uh, when other members of the portfolio committee spoke, I thought that I'm covered. But once the chair mentioned that, I think that I must also emphasize on that point because it also came into our attention. Uh, that Councillor Ketiwe, who's the MMC of infrastructure, does not have reports. All the time he comes with unfinished projects. So as the chair is alluding to that fact, we like to get from the MEC if he does have such understanding as well as the committee members that all the time when the SMMC is supposed to report, is, she's always saying that all projects are unfinished. The other thing, Chair, the other point, I don't know, it needs to be confirmed. Staff members uh, are alleged that they are not coming to work because there are no PPEs. And this is a very concern to us as members of the Portfolio Committee for the one fact, MEC. We now uh, get a report uh, that the, the numbers of COVID are increasing, even if they are not increasing the numbers. So if the municipality does not provide PPEs to our workers, so on top of the crisis that has been uh, reported about this municipality is going to make the situation worse. And the third point, there is a company chair. I don't know if the MEC can shed the light with us as members of the committee. Compario, that company has been there he is, is, the, is the only one who have been benefiting in everything in the municipality. And I don't think I'm the first person to, to, to raise the issue or the concern about this campaign. It's also been uh, alleged that uh, the report about this Combario company, the report was put under the carpet after the council gave the mayor instruction to handle it. So we don't know if the, if the MEC does have a report on such issues. Because if we are serious <clears throat> to tackle the issues that is affecting this municipality, as the chair saying that 
the committee members couldn't go there because there was a lot of unrest. The moment they heard that the committee is coming, they're doing the oversight, the community was up in arms. As a result, the committee was not fine about the situation that was happening there. As a result, we really need to get to resolving the issues around the that municipality. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kalipi. Over to you, MEC and team. Thank you very much, Chair, uh, for all the questions from members of the committee. We appreciate all of them. And uh, we believe that they will help us to do better. Uh, and as the chair has said, that the intervention was uh, started in 2018. Uh, and when it was implemented, there were witnesses. Uh, we have uh, uh, acknowledged this when we engaged with the select committee of uh, uh, NCOP, uh, we did indicate that there were witnesses. So it must be understood that the intervention has been there in doing. So the decision to intervene was taken in 2018. So this year there was no new decision to uh, intervene. Uh, but what we were doing was to fix the weaknesses. And the chair did correctly say that one of the things that was done in 2018 was to appoint the uh, uh, municipal manager, I mean, the, the administrator as a municipal manager. That in itself was a weakness because a municipal manager in terms of the law accounts to council. So you can be, uh, uh, for lack of a better way, to be an administrator. Because in fact, in terms of the law, if you have uh, not dissolved a municipality, so you don't necessarily have an administrator. It's an intervention team. So you can then have an, your intervention team being subjected to cancer. So the weakness was that the intervention team was subjected to cancer. So you can intervene and subject yourself to the same council that is dysfunctional or that has got weaknesses. So that is one of the problems. And the other problem was that the, 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 the province was supposed to um, report, I think, monthly or quarterly to NCOP and to the minister, and as you say, update Salga as well, and to the provincial executive council. And that was not done. So once it came to my attention, and I don't want to shift blame and say, no, I was not there in 2018 and all that. I don't operate like that. I'm a successor in law. That's why we had to take responsibility and uh, deal with the witnesses. So there was no new decision to uh, intervene. Hence, Salga was consulted when that decision was taken in 2018 on the intervention. So what was happening now was just uh, the deployment of the intervention team led by one of our DDGs. So I, I hear, and, and we, we engaged with Salga, uh, the provincial executive committee, because uh, Salga was up in arms, uh, believing that we don't respect them, we don't take them serious, we're not engaging them. So fortunately, I was able to attend their full provincial executive committee meeting and we ironed out issues with them. We engaged, uh, but uh, to say as well, Chair, that that uh, environment is very toxic. It's a politically toxic environment. So even the information that was given to Salga by some of the, because we're able to detect that some of the uh officials there and uh, some politicians were behind that because they didn't want the intervention to continue or the weaknesses to be rectified uh, because they wanted uh, uh, issues to continue as they were and we did give a report uh, as well 
on uh, despite the weaknesses what were some of the achievements because uh, the fact that the situation is still worse it doesn't mean that there were no uh, uh, improvements they, they, they might be minor for instance at some point the municipalities could not pay escom at all it, it could not pay rent order at all but because of that intervention with its own weaknesses the situation was able to improve ultimately and because of this blurring of lines uh, you ended up having people who were in the intervention like mr Nguani becoming an acting mm uh, the, the 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 cfo the current cfo now he went there as part of the intervention and he was ultimately hired as a cfo so there were a lot of weaknesses and we will not um, uh, hide that because if we do I think it will be a a, a, a a problem and we will not be able to solve uh, this issue. So what I'm saying um, answers this question, how do we uh, intend ensuring that we improve things? Firstly, it's on how we intervene by dealing with these weaknesses. Uh, secondly, making sure that we improve relations and we work better. Uh, <clears throat> We, we, we improve relations and we work better with all stakeholders, SALGA, NCOP, our portfolio committee in the legislature where we report, uh, and to also update EXCO on a regular basis. But to ensure that this plan that is being implemented, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, that, that has been put in place, is implemented to the latter. As you will see, uh, in the report, we are monitoring the situation weekly. We have taken it upon ourselves uh, to ensure that uh, the the MEC does not uh, depend on the administrators only, but uh, uh, the 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 MEC does not on administrators only, but we are other municipalities. Um, we've got another portfolio of human settlement. So we've got another portfolio of urban planning. So it, it's just not easy. It's very difficult, but uh, we understand it has to be done. We have to be hands on. So that's what um, we, 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 we have done. The issue about the mayor lying to the municipality, because you see, the, the other issue okay, is to also agree with the portfolio committee that we are not running council. So the council, in terms of uh, the law, uh, it's still in charge. Um, um, it's the highest decision-making body. And if the mayor misleads council, there's a code of conduct of councillors, which clearly defines the role of everybody, including the MEC. So the MEC can't just, uh, uh, in, terms of, in terms of that code of conduct, act on any councillor without any process being taken by the council. So, that important fact of uh, understanding that we are not running cancer is very important because there are certain issues that requires cancer. We are, however, uh, have, we have, however, intervened to deal with three specific areas. And even how that is done, it's important to ensure that we take control of that. And that is the finance, the supply chain. And the, and the infrastructure projects, because that's where the problems, and, and this is where the mayor himself has asked us to, to come in. So these issues of politics, because there's issues that I can't do anything about, uh, the politics there, these are politicians in their own right, they are in their space, it's a different sphere of government. And I think, uh, 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 Chair, uh, members of the committee sh should read the uh, the judgment today about uh, the Supreme Court of Appeal judgment on Swan, where there was a split decision on uh, uh, the intervention we've made there. And uh, there are very interesting matters that are being raised there about the role of the province and all that. And as you know, that uh, the Concord is still going to um, make a determination on, 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 on this issue. So uh, I know when things goes wrong, the question is where's the MEC? What is the MEC doing and all that? When the MEC intervenes, like uh, it has happened in Swan, it's interference, power grab and all that. So 
Kasperi wa rikho mnyo mshade. Wa yaba mula do a we yaba mula. But um, we are not going to uh, throw our hands in the air and uh, uh, appear helpless. We will uh, do what we think in terms of the law has to be done um, with all the municipalities uh, without uh, any uh, fear or favor. So we are dealing with these issues. Um, and and, and the, the, the members will also, I don't know, because I was not in that meeting. If it was reported that the municipality is not just under 139B, it's also under 1395, uh, which is a financial. Uh, so it would have helped to get away wanting the CFO to be uh, arrested and all that. As I've said, that is a toxic environment. I'm sitting with a lot of. Uh, complaints from councillors. The, the the said councillor has written me a letter complaining about her life being threatened. The mayor has complained about the speaker and all that. So the 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 the, the environment is very toxic. Um, there's there's factions there, and those factions find expression in the municipality. So we want to deal with the uh, issue differently and make sure that we we intervene. And uh, the good thing about the 20 decision that uh, our administrators must be withdrawn because we still have them in our payroll. It means we can use them elsewhere. And they have uh, uh, done well, especially on the finances in 20. I mean, as we speak, they are living that municipality with a surplus of a billion or, or so plus. And we think uh, the skills that they have, some of them can come in handy in in, in, in and So we are going to reinforce that team and we would want the team to be uh, decisive and not be subjected to uh, the factions that are there uh, in, in, in cancer. So, the uh, potential set and identified those areas of improvement. On the supply chain, for instance, it was just free for all. Things were all over the place. Um, there were deviations every day. We have stopped that. Um, there's improvement in how they procure for things like electrical cables and all that. They have been overcharged and all that. So we are dealing with those. There is uh, an improvement. Uh, on the issues of public participation, we will work with the speaker because that's the function of council. It's not ours. Uh, as I've said, we have not, the council has not been dissolved. So the council is there and what we would have to do uh, in line with section 154, like we do with all municipalities, is to force them to exercise uh, uh, or rather work with them and support them to exercise uh, their um, fiduciary duties. We will do that. The training of councillors, um, well, whether this has improved the, their capacity or not, it's a matter of time. and. Um, it will also depend on how they discharge their responsibilities on the various areas uh, that uh, they're dealing with. Um, how much is the monthly collection of the municipality? The municipalities, uh, I, I know at some point they were sitting at 74% in terms of collection. And I think the accepted uh, ratio is uh, 80, 80 plus. So they were not far from 80, but COVID-19, uh, uh, brought about a lot of problems. And I think we can provide this information in terms of the uh, figures. Uh, on holding them to account on issues of uh, unauthorized, irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful, one of the things, and the members are right, are correct, that these irregular expenditures, wasteful and fruitless, the, the 800 million that one of the members was talking about uh, comes from 2017. And uh, this company that member Mkalip is talking about, I'll come to it, comparing, it was brought specifically to investigate that. There was a report with clear recommendations and there was a delay because uh, the, the disciplining of officials, it's not the responsibility of COCTA, the responsibility of council and the municipal manager. Uh, in terms of the law, we don't have that authority. It will be illegal for us to charge anybody because we have not taken uh, that fun function. We have, however, uh, decided, working with the municipality, that we must involve the office of the 
solicitor general to get the state attorneys to help us to fast track this issue. So we have already uh, asked that uh, the, the the team must must get um, uh, this uh, um, uh, 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 what is it uh, state attorneys to come in. So um, a member Brink talks about failed intervention, uh, dysfunctional municipality. We, I mean, we have said ourselves that we are not happy uh, about the state there. And that's why we were also not happy with how Cocta had intervened. And that's why we don't want to uh, uh, blame anybody because we are successors in law. We are dealing with this issue. And I think uh, Member Brink uh, will appreciate, as I've said, that uh, I don't run municipalities. Uh, I don't have that power unless the municipality has been dissolved. So if there was a court process, uh, like in this instance, and the papers were hidden, even from the mayor, by the way, uh, by an official, and we have since asked for a report, and we're told one of those officials has resigned, how would I have known? Uh, because I don't go around uh, in courts asking what are the matters before you on the municipalities. Um, if the matter would have been brought to our attention, we would have dealt with it. Uh, and I think Honorable Brink must ask his colleagues in the Houghton Legislature, if they're honest with him, they'll tell him, uh, I'm very much awake, I don't sleep. And that's why we had to intervene in Swan. That's why we have intervened in Johannesburg previously, and we're intervening now whenever there are problems. So we don't sleep on the job. We are very much awake, uh, very much uh, flexible. So uh, a member bring to expect me to know every detail about every municipality. I think it's just disingenuous and politicking uh, because that's not uh, my responsibility. I'm supposed to do oversight, which is what we are doing. And we ask the right questions and uh, we get the answers. And when that issue was brought to our attention, we attended to it. The uh, DDG who's uh, leading the intervention team met with the company and they've had an agreement uh, on how to deal with this issue to present, to prevent uh, what you call uh, creditors uh, eating municipality piece by piece. Uh, and you will know, uh, Honorable Brink, that the issue of creditors is not just peculiar to this uh, municipality. Uh, all, all other municipalities. In fact, uh, in Tuani, we're sitting with a 6 billion rent uh, litigation as a result of uh, illegal political decisions that were made um, by the DA administration there. And this can collapse uh, the municipality. I don't know if this was brought to your attention. Just last week, we lost a case in Tuani uh, on the broadband, uh, uh, on the broadband uh, uh, contract because it was illegally uh, illegally uh, cancelled by the city of Tuani uh, DA led, and uh, the judges were scathing. The, all this, the five Supreme Court judges were unanimous in their decision that uh, this uh, action was illegal. So uh, we are dealing with all those, uh, those issues, including in this uh, uh, municipalities, uh, municipality uh, M. Fuleni and uh, we are attending to it. So the issues of uh, GOD, you know, the honorable member, as I've said, we are not running the municipality. So uh, all we do is to support. Uh, and if GOD is not uh, functioning, it's one of the issues. We will advise the municipality uh, because we have, there's a thin line between uh, oversight and interference. And we are very much careful because there's a case study now in uh, law uh, on this intervention that we have made. Uh, and we can't wait for the uh, constitutional court judgment because it's actually going to have serious ramifications for the um, uh, legal architecture of, uh, of um, uh, local government in our country. And we might have to uh, amend it because uh, these interventions have brought to the fore a lot of um, weaknesses that are there in legislation and we are dealing uh, with that. So if, can, if there's a councillor who abuses their power, calls a meeting to deal with upper limits and Christmas parties, that's unfortunate. Uh, the best we can do is to reprimand uh, the councillor, encourage her to uh, take her work serious and not abuse her power and actually uh, do what they're supposed to do. Because uh, as I've said, we are not running council and we don't want to run council.
We are intervening in the three areas that we have uh, intervened on and we have rectified the weakness. The, the, the issue of MPEG, MPEG uh, impacts in all municipalities. I'm releasing a report which we are taking to Exco tomorrow on the City Bank District Municipality. And one of the glaring issues uh, there is how MPEG uh, has not uh, functioned properly. There's a problem in Rent West about uh, MPEG in all municipalities. And you will know that uh, because of how local government uh, legislation is crafted, unlike in province and national, in terms of the clear distinction of the separation of power between the executive and legislature, uh, it is different in this case. Uh, council, um, council has both a legislative and executive authority, uh, unlike in national in province where the executive led by the premier has got the executive authority and the, the legislature has got the legislative. And that's why your scorper, for instance, which is uh, MPEG in this uh, instance, uh, will, will, will function even better. So there is also that uh, uh, challenge of how municipalities are capacitating the MPEG to deal with the issues, which we will uh, advise accordingly, including uh, uh, encouraging them to work with scopers, with the scopa, sorry, in the in the province, so that they can learn and um, uh, uh, see how scopa is dealing with these issues uh, in the province. I wouldn't know about the qualifications of the municipal manager because I even I've not hired him. Uh, I'm not involved in the hiring of the municipal manager. I'm not allowed by law. In fact, uh, members will know there was a court previously. Uh, when uh, senior managers, the section what 56 were appointed, there was supposed to be a concurrence by the MEC. Uh, that's not the case anymore. Um, so the municipalities hire. Uh, so the council has hired. So I think uh, that question will have to be best uh, uh, answered by council. Uh, but we'll also take interest on the uh, qualifications. Uh, if the uh, uh, the municipal manager was appointed uh, irregularly and he doesn't qualify, uh, there has to be recourse in law and we can look at that. But I can't chase the municipal manager. I don't have that power, unfortunately. I wish I had. I would uh, not hesitate. Um, as, as members know, we have acted decisively previously where we've got the uh, responsibility to. The issue of the big companies, we continue to have a dialogue with them. Uh, there's an issue about ESCOM, for instance, uh, collecting directly from, from some of these uh, uh, large power uh, consumers, especially in Mfuleni. And this uh, depletes the income of the municipality. We are engaging with ESCOM in this regard so that uh, uh, they, they res we respect each other's um, territories and uh, we, we support each other. But there's also issues about ESCOM supplied uh, areas and also about how ESCOM collects uh, uh, from these municipalities. In the big municipalities like in Eguruleni, we've got a problem because ESCOM is actually creating problems for the municipality. Where the municipality supplies, the municipality collecting rate, collection rate is high. Where ESCOM supplies the... So it, it's, 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 um, it's a complex issue that will, will, will need us to continuously uh, in, engaged. So the issues of someone was suspended on Friday, come back on Monday, no consequence management. Uh, again, the, 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 the leadership of the municipality must ensure there's consequence management, but we've decided that we want to help them by bringing the state law advisors, uh, as I've said. You know, issue of time frames. This is not a, a mechanical issue because, you know, you, you, the municipality owes two billion, two point something, billion to ESCOM. For me to say to the committee, we would have paid that two billion uh, next year or next week, I'll be lying and misleading you <laughs> because to pay them, it means there must be money collected and the municipality does not even collect that much. Uh, and it also has other computing uh, priorities. It owes rent water 600 and something million. In fact, if you ask me, once we put systems in place and we make this municipality work, we might have to ask for a bailout, but only if uh, we, are, we are convinced that uh, the bailout will, because these problems are systematic and they, they start from many, 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 many years. Uh, and, and therefore, 
uh, you also have a huge uh, salary bill. Uh, you might have to decide what do you do with it. You retrench people, but uh, that will have serious uh, um, consequences. So we'd have to ask difficult questions, take difficult uh, decisions in dealing uh, with this issue. Um, so the, 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 the MM would have to be disciplined. As you know, the MM uh, respond, uh, reports to the mayor and the council. Uh, he doesn't report to me. Um, and if I was to try and discipline him, he would probably ask me who I am. Uh, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. Um, so um, I, 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 I supervise the HOD and his team. And if you were to ask me if uh, we are taking action where we are in terms of the officials who are not doing their work, we are. Um, I have dismissed few people in the last few months and especially in human settlement. I even dismissed one uh, without the hearing summarily because uh, they have stolen money um, and, and, and we're even recovering monies and all that. So acting is not a problem, but we must act within the confines of the law uh, because as you know, we are a constitutionally governed uh, country. So if people have been quite controlled politically, it's unfortunate. Uh, because as I've said, that is a political environment. There's a lot of politics. You've got the uh, politics of the ANC that ends up uh, finding expression in the municipality. You also have pol politics of political parties in council uh, that are fighting amongst uh, themselves. And, 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 and if there's an element of political interference, uh, the best we can do is to ensure that uh, we we got against this in the areas where we are responsible as a provincial government and we don't allow it um the account being attached uh, how did this happen as i've said this company was appointed many 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 years ago to do meters they took the municipality to court and unfortunately the municipality did not defend itself because even the leadership of the municipality did not have the information that the matter is before court. And that's why they were given default judgment because no one, uh, um, and I, I have seen this in human settlement where we have lost uh, our account, by the way, was attached in human settlement on matters of 2016 and 2018 by the red ants. They said we owe them 400 million. Uh, and these judgments were issued long ago. Uh, this is recent, like three months uh, ago, we had to deal with it. And it's judgments that were, issued in 2016, 2018. I, I was not there. Um, and uh, I was an MEC somewhere else. So when you come into a department, there's, there's, there's a lot of issues. The, a department is vast. So it's not possible that uh, I would have known everything about it. But we endeavor to know as much as we can. Um, I, I, our relationship with Salga, from where I'm sitting, at least based on the uh, discussion we had with the PC of Salga. I would say uh, our uh, relationship is cordial, but I would also think that we need to work on it and improve so that it's uh, become even much better. Uh, we have agreed with them that we would have to have regular meetings with their PCs. They would give us slots to brief them on a whole range of issues. Uh, one of the issues um, uh, we are dealing with uh, that we will be briefing them on is the 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 committee of inquiry we've established on all municipalities of housing because the problem is systematic and we want to deal with it systematically so uh, uh, we can share that information with the committee we don't have a problem the report is almost ready uh, they were just doing uh, touch-ups and this will help uh, because they did a detailed analysis of each municipality including m Fulane. and uh, the chair you are right i mean uh, we know about this public discontent in Mfulene, and it will be there because of a number of service delivery uh, challenges uh, that are there. Um, we, we deal with these ourselves. We receive a lot of um, complaints and memorandums on a regular basis. Um, and you will know that there's a big problem of sewer in that uh, <clears throat> municipality, in fact, in that region that impacts, unfortunately, on development as well. Unfortunately, the Minister of Water and Sanitation and Head Department are dealing with this. There's a committee that has been established. They have set aside a budget and they are involving 
other departments uh, like COCTA and uh, uh, the uh, uh, Defense Force to help with this, but uh, it is a big problem. Um, on the issue of the differences with the national on the intervention, uh, well, I was not there. Uh, in fact, uh, the Premier raised this issue with me uh, when I asked why didn't we intervene properly? And I was told that, in fact, the problem was that uh, um, COCTA officials in Gauteng actually didn't want this intervention in the first place. And maybe that's the reason why it was not done properly. But I, I was not there. This is what I was told. Um, uh, Obangwani, yes, he was appointed MM, as I've said, it was a weakness. And then there was a, a, a Salga unions not consulted. As I've said earlier on, uh, Chair, that uh, my understanding is that we didn't take a new decision to intervene. A decision to intervene was long taken in 2018. Uh, and maybe the question is, uh, are we expected to uh, 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 consult with Salga when we deploy an administrator? Should they make a, a, an input? I don't have a problem with that. Uh, it will be welcomed because they are organized local government. They understand the space better. They can even uh, give us people uh, who can help in these uh, municipalities, take people from other municipalities where um, there is uh, pockets of excellence. So we don't have a problem. As the, the SOD and our officials said on 20, I think they've uh, raised that issue. They've explained it. On the IGR systems uh, having collapsed, I, I, I wouldn't agree. I, I, I would rather say there's weaknesses. Um, so the chair says the judgment happened during intervention. This doesn't inspire confidence. This judgment uh, process didn't start now. It started long, 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 long ago. I think even before the intervention in 2018, I think if I'm not mistaken. And as I have said, there was mischief on, on, on the part of uh, officials. And there was a, a deliberate sabotage working with the service provider um, to deal with this issue. Uh, on the issue of how administrators are appointed, I, I agree, Chair, we don't have a problem, but we endeavor, and we have not appointed any uh, administrator that does not have a degree, at least uh, uh, in a specific area. So all the people that we have uh, appointed, it's people who have qualifications who can help us. As I've said, we will also look at those who are in Twani because... Uh, uh, they can help us now that they are not uh, doing well there. On the issue of uh, Tilly being subject of the mayoral committee, I wouldn't know, but I have received a complaint from one of the uh, MMCs, MMC Mube, about uh, Tilly, and we have uh, asked the administrator to look at that issue. We are investigating it. I will receive a report, and if there's any inappropriate, inappropriate action on her part, we will not hesitate uh, to remove her there. I can uh, um, assure you. Incomplete projects, the municipality will have to answer uh, why a project is not complete, uh, what happened, how much has been spent. And in fact, we could even consider uh, doing a forensic on this, especially where money has been lost, uh, so that people can be held to account uh, because we can't just have uh, 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 what you call uh, projects not being complete and people uh, get away with murder. Uh, this is wrong. The staff members are not coming to work because of this, because there's no PPE. And once again, this is a is an HR function, which is not our responsibility. It's that of the municipal manager. But like I've said, we'll not throw our hands in the air and be helpless. We will uh, ensure. I know that there was an attempt to deviate and use COVID-19 as an excuse to procure PPEs and other things. And we said there should not be any form of deviations. If they want to buy PPEs and other things, they have to follow the process so that we avoid the problems we've seen in other areas. And there is no excuse for the municipality not to provide uh, PPEs. This is unacceptable, it's wrong, and we will definitely attend to that. On the issue of Compario, uh, Honorable, Honorable Kalibi, uh, my understanding is that Compario was uh, contracted by the municipality two years back, I think, to deal with investigations of your 
unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. And they have presented the report. Do we have a report? Yes, we do, uh, that they have conducted. But if there's any other work that they're doing in the municipality, I'm not aware of that. The only uh, work I'm aware of is this investigation. And I know they are not popular with many officials um, uh, who are uh, implicated in the report and we would have to act on it. There was a question about some powerful supply chain manager. We, we have taken over supply chain and that's why we are going to beef that team up so that we are not uh, subjected and uh, held at ransom by any official of a municipality, whether they are powerful or not, uh, we are not interested in how powerful they are. What we are interested in is that supply chain processes must comply with the law and uh, there must not be inflation of prices, there must be value for money, there must be transparency, there must be accountability, and that's the instruction we are giving to the administrators. The other issues uh, will require the municipality to deal with. So I've tried Chair, to deal with all the issues one by one. If there's an issue that uh, I've not dealt with, uh, members can indicate, but um, I've also tried to be as honest as possible uh, to the committee because we don't want to hide anything. Uh, that's not our intention. Uh, if anything, we need as much help as we can get from the committee, from the select committee, from SALGA, from everybody, uh, because this task will require uh, all of us to be united and act in unison uh, to turn things around. But uh, I'm confident we will turn things around there, especially with how we have uh, intervened now. Uh, but I'm also co uh, confident of uh, our capacity uh, to be able to do things um, because we have also changed how we are supporting all municipalities. We've decided to be proactive and instead focus on uh, uh, 154, which is support, instead of waiting uh, for problems. And unfortunately, in Mfulene, there are problems. We can't run away from them. We have to uh, intervene. So we will constantly update you. Uh, if there's a need to ramp up the intervention, we are uh, at liberty to do that. We don't have a problem. But at this point, we are, I think, uh, on course having intervened on the witnesses. And I think COVID-19 uh, disturbed some of the things we could have done um, uh, uh, by now. Uh, 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 thank you very much, Chairperson. Colleagues, do we have follow up questions? I see Kazam, Brink, Kalipi, in that order for now. Uh, Thank you, Chair. I think we must appreciate the responses. And uh, it almost reminded me, Chair, of a song. Or I think it's a rap song that that, that is titled, uh, It Was In Me. So um, it, it almost got me back to that, but I was not best at rap. So um, I would leave it at that. So um, I'm guessing that Chairperson, the fact that the MEC is saying that this has no knowledge of what is going on and so on and so on so many times in his statements um, give ri gives rise to the, the question about concurrence. Uh, what then is uh, 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 in municipalities, uh, what, how, how, uh, 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 as whether senior managers uh, in municipalities are not appointed on concurrence uh, of the MSC, uh, so that we 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 get a sense of 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 what then informs the his his uh, not knowing approach into 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 those into the questions that we are asking. As he say, they are. They are in municipalities, uh, rightfully so. Uh, but our questions pertain to really the 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 edge from from us as committees to correct the situation and to see the remedial the the the, the, the remedial actions uh, 
put in place, uh, particularly in that municipality, because that municipality chair is in ICU, uh, literal. It's things that we have seen. We're not talking about things that we are seeing on paper here. People spoke in front of us, and they they said they they said things. They they are even worse, Chairperson. I've I've seen a lady there that is bad from 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 working with the municipality. Uh, I was offended a bit because uh, given the fact that uh, women in the country have not been given a chance, even at the workplace, even salary wise, they have not been given uh, anything. So how could we at this time, when we are calling ourselves free, that we find things like that? But nevertheless, Chair, uh, uh, I, I would leave it at that because uh, I, I don't understand. I want to get an understanding as to what uh, in that Comperio company, there are four directors. One of them is Isaac Mashab, a very well-known person in the province of Gauteng and a very close friend to the former mayor and the, and the current provincial secretary. Uh, in 2018, a close relative to Mashaba by the name of Rosina uh, Mashaba joined the Comperio as a non-executive director. And this was mainly to safeguard the interest of the Isaac, of Isaac Mashaba, who was initially a director, but had no, uh, had to be removed in order to cover a link between, between Comperio and the former mayor. So, so this is a, this is the scenario that I want to paint. That uh, we would have liked to see that uh, these things must be a thing of the past. Uh, we would have wanted to see uh, to get a sense and understanding of uh, what are the remedial actions that would be taken to permanently arrest the situation there. Not that of saying that it's there and then we must uh, uh, accept it as a godsend that uh, it's politics. Can't be because uh, people uh, are affected by all these things. It's people at the center of all these things that we're mentioning here. We must remember that it's people that are affected by this thing because when someone is stealing money when someone is not qualified when someone is not is not uh, attending council when someone is not does not account to anyone when someone is untouchable and so forth when someone is factional he affects the municipality so so uh, i would uh, we would have uh, wanted to get a sense of really what 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 would be the remedial action in that sense uh, thank you chef Pesir. Thank you, Honorable Plaza. The next follow-up is from Honorable Brink. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, Chair, in asking about this legal dispute and default judgment taken against Mfuleni in October of this year, earlier this month, uh, the question to the MEC is not about things that happened before he was appointed as MEC. It's not about things that are outside of his power because uh, Infoleni's financial department is under provincial administration. It's not about an academic issue. The default judgment and its implications for Infoleni are current. The, that judgment was taken, or that uh, summons was issued in March, when MEC Maile was the MEC responsible for local government in Gauteng, when Mfuleni, as it is still today, was under provincial administration as its finances uh, go. And the default judgment was taken as well when MEC Maile was responsible for local government, when M. Fuleni and its finances were under provincial administration. And we were told that the MEC meets on a weekly basis with administrators and presumably he does so 
to advise the provincial executive of what is going on in Mfuleni, as well as other places where the provincial government has stepped in because the local authority cannot fulfill its constitutional executive obligations. Now the MEC says, well, he's not quite sure. Nobody knew about this. Nobody knew about this dispute. Well, Chairperson, that is an incredible admission by the Gauteng provincial government that a dispute of this size that can literally gulp up all of the bank accounts and the money that Mfuleni has to pay staff, to pay councillors, to pay ESCOM and Rand Water, all of that can be taken up if this company, BCX, decides to attach the other assets of Mfuleni. And to say that nobody knew about it is such an admission of incompetence, it should really uh, make both the provincial executive as well as the national executive consider what is going on in Infoleni. But aside from the laissez-faire uh, uh, answer that the MEC gave uh, about that, that massive uh, legal dispute, the question of what happens to the debt to the creditors, to the cash flow situation of Mfuleni now remains unanswered. And I want to emphasize this is not an academic matter. What could possibly happen if a municipality goes bankrupt and all of the money has been depleted and there's nothing left to bail anyone out? It's not academic, it's a practical issue. What happens if ESCOM cuts the electricity supply to Mfuleni? What happens to rates and taxes? What happens to businesses and jobs? What happens if BCX attaches the other bank account that has been used to pay salaries this month? These are serious and immediate issues. And we have to ask the Gauteng Provincial Government and MEC Maile, if you don't have the authority, if, if, if you, as you claim here, you can't answer for any of this, what value are you adding currently in that municipality? What function are you fulfilling if all you do is, is wash your hands? And then I can only wonder what, what is going on in the heads of the administrators you've employed, uh, deployed to that municipality. If their political principle is washing his hands of the situation and saying, well, if we should leave Mfuleni, we're happy to leave Mfuleni. What does that do to their authority and their relationship with officials and their ability to determine the course of events uh, and to, to steer this uh, intervention towards a successful end? It's devastating. Then, Chairperson, the, the question moves to national culture. And we've got the Director General here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the, the, the Deputy Minister, although I, he, he might have joined us. Is it not time for the national government to intervene in Mfuleni in terms of section 139 sub 7 of the constitution, where if a province fails at an intervention or it fails to perform its intervention functions, and I think we've had the admission now of failure clearly here tonight, then national government must step into the shoes of the province and, and make sure that, that those executive obligations that can't be fulfilled by the municipality, that can't be fulfilled by the province, in fact, get done. Uh, can we please get an indication from National Cogta whether Section 139, Sub 7 intervention in Mfuleni is being dis uh, considered to take this problem off of the hands of Gauteng, which clearly can't deal with it? Thanks, Chair. Thank you. The next uh, follow-up come from Honorable Mkalipi. Uh, Chairperson, I think I'm covered, partly covered by what Honorable Cesar uh, and Honorable Brink have raised here. Because when I listen to the MEC, the MEC keep on saying that he does not run the municipality. He is a political head of the municipality. When things went wrong, we all look 
at the MEC to go and assist in a situation in municipality. And um, his general powers, I think, are stipulated in terms of Section 125, subsection 2 of the Constitution, whereby it states that MEC exercise their executive authorities through a, one, a wide range of responsibilities that include implementing national and provincial laws, developing and implementing provincial policy and coordinating the functions of provincial administration and its department. So I'm worried if the MEC is going to keep on saying that it does not run the municipality. There's a crisis now and it affects the people on the ground. So therefore, the only option that we have is the MEC to go and be decisive as a political head as well as the point that Honorable Brink is making, that the national, the department of COCTA nationally, they must also play a meaningful role in this situation because it's very clear that the municipality has lost the plot of fighting corruption. And as a result, it has a direct effect on the implementation of the service delivery on the ground. The case in point is that when the MEC keep on saying, no, I'm not involved. The municipality in terms of the constitution, they must run their affairs. Well is good, but let me just remind one thing, the issue of concurrence, whereby honorable as I have alluded to that fact. Okay, the senior managers, when they get appointed, the MSC have to have a weight in terms of concurrence. So therefore the MSC in this regard, he must be involved and he must play the political role as the head of the department. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable um, Kalipi. Did I omit the other members before I come in? The silence means then uh, you are covered. Let me see. Can we then given the concerns by the colleagues here from you, what are the substantive provincial support measures in real term, such as the people deployed and assigned, and how much has the province then spent so far in trying to help this municipality? Yes. I'm raising this issue because then uh, the issue of the previous administration and the current one, there's been a very serious issue whether this current uh, administration is a continuation of the previous one or it's a new one. Maybe you can explain that to us also on that one. The issue of TLE that I was trying to say here and also for you to share with us actually. Are you getting the necessary cooperation from the municipality? Because then if then you keep on telling us this is not belongs to cancer, all those kind of things, then maybe what is the actual purpose of this intervention? My understanding, intervention is supposed to stabilize the municipality. Then under the circumstances, can you then maybe share with us your actual assessment? Do you really think this administration will yield the positive results uh, under the circumstances? Then there are things that has been happening, like we have indicated to us, then you've taken over the supply chain of the department. Maybe share with us what are the terms and reference of all these administrators that you have put in there. It will make us then understand this administration because on its own, uh, the way it has been handled from the beginning, it, it's a challenge on its own. So maybe if you are to share with us, what are the terms of reference? And then what becomes the, the role of council? And then uh, the other issue that I wanted to ask is with regard to the issue that I've raised on the harassment of one of your own um, administrator in the name of Tilly. Uh, because she was very honest with the committee on the progress, giving us the progress because you have deployed her to deal with the supply chain. I didn't raise the issue of any shenanigans that, because even if you have got a complaint, 
Maybe it's their honesty that may they them to get a complaint from the mayoral committee. So that's the issue that I wanted to to get from from you uh, to say that maybe because it seems as if instead of the situation uh, improving, it's worsening. What is your response to the UIFW that has rocketed? during the tenure of administration to over 1.1 billion. And then there's been administrators. And I'm glad that you are saying you're a successor in tech. You can't say uh, the previous administration was done by the previous MEC. When you, you assume role responsibility, you also inherit the liabilities, everything. So are you not concerned that instead of the situation then stabilizing, matters are becoming worse? That's a... Can you proudly say this is an intervention that's working? Because we are told every week you convene meetings with all these administrators to update you. But the situation seems not to be improving. Uh, then uh, one of your administrators will raise this issue of the incomplete projects. I think it's Silas that told us uh, there's a plan on how do you then deal with all these issues? Because at the end of the day, then, if we we'll say we are intervening, then again say this is the responsibility of council, then why are we intervening? So those are some of the concerns that one want to raise. Over to you, MC. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I hear there's a member who's talking about the uh, rap song. Uh, the, what it was in me. Uh, I also write, like another rap song by Tupac Shaku. Uh, and uh, he says, we are like roses that grow on concrete. So maybe the member must also listen to that song. And I think uh, it is more appropriate for the situation we find ourselves in there. Uh, so it's not true. It's not true. I don't know. Uh, uh, because I've been saying one of the things I've said, and I'm glad the chair repeats verbatim what I've said, that I'm a successor in law. But I've also said that we can't throw our hands in the air. And I've never said uh, <clears throat> we don't know what's happening. In fact, if, 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 we didn't know what's happening. I wouldn't be able to answer any question. I would, I would have just said in one sentence, I don't know anything. I would have said that. I've given so much details and I'm, I'm glad and hope that this uh, session is being recorded so that members can be able to. There's so much I've said uh, because there's so much we know about what is happening. So to say that we said we don't know anything, it's not true, Chair. It can be true. But also to say that uh, the law has got limitations. I, I don't see how is that uh, not taking responsibility. Uh, and I don't see how is that uh, running away from uh, explaining and uh, <clears throat> creating an impression that we don't know anything. It's not true, it's not true. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but I can tell you now uh, we know so much, and that's why we are answering all your questions. And that's why we are not even asking the HOD and his team to do that, because we know what's happening there. But like I've said, I wouldn't know what's happening in the courts. I don't work in the courts. Remember Bringen, I'll come to, to I think it's just dis disingenuous and politicking. I'll come to that. Uh, and I've given an example about my other department now, whose account was uh, attached, and we dealt with that. And I can assure you, Chair, that all the things that comes to our attention, uh, we, we attend to them, including the issue of this uh, court. I, the, the, the member was talking about the rap song. He's talking about, uh, I think the member, I forgot the name, sorry, Chair. Uh, he's talking about concurrence, the same issue that Member Mkalif is raising. I've, re I've answered this, this uh, question in the first round. I will, I will answer it again. And when I answered in the first round, I even made a reference to sections 56 managers when I answered. And I'll go slow. I'll answer slow. I said 
previously, previously, the appointment of senior managers. And when I was right, asking, uh, uh, answering this question was in relation to the issue of the municipal manager, whose qualifications are under question. And I said, I didn't hire him. He's hired by even said that the municipal manager accounts to them. I even said, if I was to do certain things, he would even ask me, who am I? I would even call the law is clear, municipality can do a municipality. I'm not, I'm not a mayor. I'm not an MMC. I'm a member of the executive council appointed by the premier of the province, responsible for local government, guided by the Structures Act, guided by the constitution and other regulations which governs what I can do and what I can't do. So I will not do things that I don't have power on. I will not do that to try and be populist about it or satisfy. And I will not do that, Chair. Unfortunately, I can't lie before the court. I can't say to the committee, yeah, I'm going to fire the municipal manager. You, you, you'll ask me when we meet in the next three months, have you done it? Why have you not done it? And then I come and say, no, cancel this, say that. No, 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 I will not do that. That I will not do. But the things that the law wants us, uh, directs us to do, we will do and we are doing them. And I'll come to that. I said, and I'm answering, I'm delivering the point. Previously, the MECs used to concur when managers were appointed, but there was a court decision subsequently which nullified that. So MECs of COCTA, but in law they're referred to as MECs of local government, don't have that power anymore. They don't concur. The, the, the manager's appointment are taken to council and then councils take a resolution. So I don't concur on the appointment of, of uh, senior managers, not anymore. It used to be the case, not anymore. In fact, there's an issue. Before that court uh, judgment, there was an issue in Johannesburg where the mayor of Johannesburg was supposed to have submitted for concurrence of the MEC. It was before the court judgment, he didn't do it. I'm on record having written to him, the one who left, uh, Heben Mashaba. Uh, I, I'm on record. I've written. It's if it was even in the media that he did not. So when we had that responsibility, we exercised it, but we don't have the responsibility. Senior managers appointed by council. In CD Bay, where I said I will release a report, there is that issue of the man, uh, appointment of managers who are supposed to was supposed to be approved by council, it was not done. And it's, it doesn't include the MEC anyway. So there's enough literature in this regard. There's enough literature that says MEC. So I don't have that power. I, I don't concur on anything when it comes to the appointment. The courts have taken that power from us as MECs. We don't have it, Chair. So I would like the members to make sure that they understand this and, and it doesn't arise again because I don't have that power. If the portfolio committee wants to uh, relook at the law and give me back that power, I'll be happy because that will help to deal with wrong uh, appointments of people who are not qualified, but I don't have that power. So the member says there's a lady who's been bad from working with the municipality. I'll be interested in that case and we will take it up. If the honorable member, my email address, honorable member, is lebohang with a G dot maile at gauteng.gov.za. Lebohang dot maile at gauteng.gov.za. I would gladly attend to that issue and I would like you to bring it to my attention. My email address is lebohang dot maile at gauteng.gov.za. So I will attend to that issue. And I will call that lady uh, in personally to deal with the issue. The issue of Isaac Mashaba, uh, the director of Compario, the friend of the former mayor, what, 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 what. My interest 
is, and the question I would ask, what was the process of appointing Comparo? Was Comparo, because people are friends. I mean, everybody has got friends everywhere and all that. So if I'm going to entertain issues of friends and all that, it will be, it will be a problem. I want to know if uh, this company was properly appointed. And that's, that's what I have already, by the way, asked the, uh, the, the, the administrator, the, 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 the head of the was it properly appointed? Did it do what it's supposed to do? Did we get value for money? Was there any inflation of prices? If those questions are answered to the uh, to to the satisfaction of the public uh, and in the interest of the law, then I'm happy. If uh, Mashaba drinks with the former mayor, I think is their problem. Uh, our problem is: Are they following process? Did they abuse it? Have they siphoned money from the municipality? If they have, uh, I can promise you now we will definitely uh, attend to that issue. I mean, member Brink is just disingenuous. And uh, his narrative is consistent with the DA narrative. Talk about incompetence and this and that. How is it incompetent uh, if, if, if information is hidden? I mean, when the court, the sheriff of the court serves papers, it doesn't serve papers to the, to the, to the, to the, to the MEC. It doesn't. I'm not served with papers on any municipality. I was saying to you just last week, I didn't know until we lost the case in Tuani. Supreme Court of Appeal, unanimous decision, illegal decision taken by. If I knew, I would have stopped it in Tuani. So the member must not be disingenuous. You want National to come in, we don't have a problem, we won't object. In fact, I'll be happy because I've said we need as much help as possible. That's what we need. If national says they come in, we will not object. We don't. But I can tell you, the problem there is systematic. It has to be understood properly. It's not about who is intervening, whether it's national or is the problem. There is an intervention. There was a weakness with the intervention. We have said that. Uh, we did not hide things. We have said that there, there has been some improvement. And what, where, 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 where are those? I said we could not pay as at some point. We could not pay rent. We are paying them. And if that's not an improvement, I don't know what it is. So, member Brink, please be objective. And you are talking about uh, this not being academic. I agree. Unfortunately, you are becoming academic about it yourself. It's not an academic exercise. And you are right that uh, uh, this impacts on service delivery, it impacts on people. And you call it an incredible admission from the government. Uh, no one knew lasers are fair. And it's not lasers are fair. When a, a court, a sheriff of the court, if the sheriff of the court served me with the papers, I would have responded immediately. And I told you now, the fact that the municipality did not even challenge this in court, it means they didn't know. As to why, it's an issue we have to deal with. Uh, it's unfortunate. It's bad. Uh, I said to you, there's an official, I'm told, because I, uh, I waited for the report, that one of those officials uh, who hid the information uh, has resigned. And the reason, so it's not like the mayor didn't know about it. The mayoral committee didn't know. It's the mayor. Who must give me information is the administrators. So if they don't know, they won't give me information. So if they, I don't get the information, I will not be able to act. So, 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 so please, please, honorable member, be honest with yourself. Don't be disingenuous. Don't play politics. I know the DA position about influence is that if you have dissolved to an dissolved DA, and that's what you must bring to the attention uh, of, uh, uh, to the fore, and, 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 and not uh, create an impression that uh, we are incompetent. We are not incompetent. Um, uh, we are not uh, from where we are sitting uh, we are not not at all uh, because all the issues that have been brought uh, to our attention we are attending to them and that's why we even said because 
the issue of consequence management, the slow movement, let's give it to the state attorney. It's attending to that. And Fulani will be one of the few municipalities in the country that is using the state attorney. You will know that state attorney is actually uh, used by the province and national. Uh, and I mean, head of the municipality, I have said to you and I've answered. Because as you, contrary to your claims that we don't know anything, we know. And that is why we have had a meeting with Rand Water. We had a meeting with the Minister of Water subsequent to the meeting we had with Rand Water. Because we know it's a problem, not just in Mfule. We had two meetings with the CEO of ESCOM because we know there's a problem, not just in Mpule, in all the municipalities. We subsequently had the meeting with ESCOM and Minister Pravin Godan, where we're joined by the Premier and all mayors because we know there's a problem. So if you say we are saying less because we don't know, it's not true. We are confronting these issues directly and we're doing what we can as COCTA, our response. We have met with the large power producers. The MEC of finance in the province has done that on, on our behalf. The team of administrators just two weeks back, Mr. Silas Zim uh, met with them uh, and the administrator. So, 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 so if you don't like our answer, it's fine. Just say you don't like our answer. Don't say we are incompetent. We don't know what we do. You know what we're doing because if we didn't know what we're doing, we wouldn't uh, bring uh, 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 has come to the table to deal with these issues. And, and, and I can tell you, those administrators are very uh, inspired because of the leadership we're providing. We, because we're not washing any hands, uh, contrary to your accusations that we wash, we're not washing any hands. If we're washing our hands, we will not meet them weekly. If we're washing our hands, we will not be meeting with ESCOM, with Rendwater, we will not be engaging with Treasury, with that. I mean, how do you wash your hands, but you are involved? It's, it's uh, um, I think there's a member of parliament, Mondo Gugubel, who says, uh, uh, you, uh, and to quote him, you don't have, a, what is it, a, a, a sense of self-contradiction. Uh, because I, I, let me see, let me see. We have lost you, colleagues. Colleagues, yes, chair. Yes, chair. We have lost him. Yeah, we have lost him. Yes, chair. I also cannot hear him. Ebe sa kuba kamande. Kamande. What's that? Uh, sorry, like Chair. Like Hello, like Chair. Like I got cut. Uh, I'm back now. So, uh, yeah, I did say that I've got some network problems. So, I'm saying if there's things you believe we're not doing well, it's fine. You tell us you're not doing this well because of this and that and all of that. And we suggest that you do one, two, three, four. We don't have a problem. We're not allergic to, 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 to new ideas and other people's ideas. We are very much open to that. Uh, the, I've dealt with the issue of concurrence, uh, and the, 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 the chair asks what, what are the substantive measures. We have presented them today, chair. Uh, I can ask my team to put them there. We've got a seven point pillar program, uh, the financial recovery plan, uh, the areas that we are intervening there, we've got them and, 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 and we, we, we presented them. Um, uh, and the chair is right that the intervention must have less than municipality. We agree with you, Chair. And that's why we said, let's do it right uh, and, and, and avoid the mistakes that we have done um, previously. Will this inter uh, intervention deal positive? I'm positive. I can put my head on the block because of how we are doing it. Uh, it might be taking a bit of time. And I understand the frustration of the committee and we share the same sentiments, by the way. We are frustrated ourselves as the provincial government because we don't want to be intervening in municipalities and running their affairs because this is a different sphere of government. And that's why I said in the judgment today by the Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, they're dealing with that issue extensively. 
uh, the, 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 all the five judges, they've got different interpretations on that issue. And it will be interesting for the members to uh, uh, go through, uh, group through that because we definitely don't want to run municipalities. We are not going to run municipalities. We don't want to. Uh, it's because municipalities are run by council and the constitution is clear that the executive and legislative authority of a municipality rests with council. That's what the constitution says. And uh, Honorable Mukalib is right, section um, um, uh, the, the relevant sections she has um, uh, quoted uh, uh, expects of us to do certain things. And we will do that. Um, we will do that and that's what we are doing. Uh, I'm not a political head of a municipality. I'm the political head of COCTA. Uh, the political head of a municipality is a mayor. So uh, we, we, we therefore expect that the mayor must do what he must do. And we must provide uh, uh, oversight. Uh, we must coordinate and we must provide support in terms of section 154. So all these sections must be read together. Um, uh, so we, we are not running. And then the issue of um, whether this is continuing or not. It is continuing, Chair. I, I, this is why I said that 2018 decision was taken. We didn't take a new decision. The only thing we did was to work on the weaknesses and replace the individuals involved. Because Mr. Nguani was sent by the province and he was made an acting municipal manager. And that's why when the municipal manager was appointed, they chucked him away. Uh, because he was their employee when he was supposed to be heading an intervention team. Uh, and, and that is one of those weaknesses uh, that was uh, uh, identified. And the TORs, I did say, in terms of the terms of reference, we're dealing with finance together with Treasury, because as you know, in terms of the MFMA, there are specific things uh, which are regulated and which are statutory that Treasury would have to do. And I also said that there's a financial recovery plan which is as a result of intervention of 1395 uh, that uh, has got uh, treasury on it. Then there's supply chain and then there's infrastructure. Those are the areas and those areas that we're intervening. That's where we said, you can't ask the municipality or the council to always give you, uh, what is it, um, permission to act on them. Because in terms of 1391, there's three uh, forms of interventions. A, which is directives. B, which is assumption of responsibility. C, which is uh, dissolution. So we are on B, meaning we've assumed that this responsibility. In fact, I was accused uh, two weeks back by people who were in a meeting saying, now I have taken powers of the CFO. I say, but what, what do you mean? Because what, but the, the intervention by its own nature, it takes away those powers. He doesn't have. Uh, because the administrators run it, you know, because of all. So I'm not bothered by all those. So the member Mkali says I must be decisive. I am decisive. And that's why I'm being accused. And I'm not entertaining uh, the factions in the municipality because they say all sorts of those people, that municipality is very toxic. Uh, and as a result, whatever you say out of this meeting, whatever you say here, they will misinterpret it uh, depending on what factions they're in. They will say, uh, the portfolio committee wants the MEC to take over and all that. And and you are raising these issues um, in a different uh, a context and, and, and correctly so, because you are concerned as much as we are. So Tilia has been harassed and the mayor says um, she has not raised shenanigans. I was just saying, uh, Chairperson, uh, just to bring to the attention of the committee that we are also dealing with that issue. And I, I was not saying you are raising it. And I respect the issue you are raising, Chair, about uh, them being harassed and whether we are we are receiving any cooperation. We are. I mean, I, I don't want to lie, Chair. Uh, we have not been defied at all by the municipality. The only problem is there's a lot of disingen disingenuousness in the municipality. There's a lot of uh, uh, squabbling. There's a lot of plotting and all that. So how we carry out this, uh, 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 this mission uh, in line with the question you have raised, whether this will yield results, will depend, uh, I mean, will we'll determine whether this will yield results and all, and all that. And what we intend doing 
is not to play uh, with anybody, is not to entertain any squabbles, is to ensure that without any fear or favor, our, our administrators intervene decisively. So we will look at that issue, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, uh, it's a serious issue. I, I, I now understand in the second round how you are raising it, but I thought in the first round I was just uh, bringing to your attention that there was uh, an issue. Um, and, and I agree with you, Chair. I, I agree. I did say even the first round, we are not happy ourselves. Uh, and I even said, remember, we want to work with everybody. Salga, uh, Cocta National. Remember, Brink is inviting National Cocta. With pleasure, we, don't have, we will not object. If they must come on uh, subsection 7, with pleasure, we'll be happy. We need that. Uh, we need that, uh, Honorable Brink. But that will not solve the problem. The problem is systematic. The environment is toxic. That's what we must deal with and not uh, uh, say who must intervene and all that. And then the, the on the UIFW increasing, uh, Chair, you are right with success in law. And one of the reasons why this uh, continues is because of how, you know, we come back to how the intervention was done. Basically, the way things were happening, it was like there's no intervention. The municipal manager will sign deviations, the CFO, this and that. It was like there is no intervention. And that is the, and maybe when I say there, were, there are weaknesses, I'm putting it mildly. Uh, the correct way to put it is like the intervention was no intervention. Maybe I must put it that way. There was no intervention. It was only in name. So there's intervention now, and that is why uh, our colleagues in the municipality are not happy because now the intervention is real because it was in theory this intervention uh, honorable chair and that is why the UAFW has increased under our watch and that can be an excuse and we will we take responsibility we will uh, deal with this decisively and I, I promise you in the coming uh, auditing financial year uh, this will not be the case because we are taking that full responsibility and strengthening the intervention. On the plan to deal with incomplete projects, these projects are historic projects. We're going to look at all of them. Uh, as I've said, and correctly so, I'm, I'm right. I mean, these were implemented by the municipality, and that's why I have said. We will also look at them. Uh, what project, how much was spent, who was appointed, why has the project uh, been delayed, uh, how much has been spent, has there been value for money? Has there been inflation? So in essence, uh, which is what I did not say earlier on, we will investigate this uh, so that you don't just have a plan and, 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 and you don't deal with the wrongdoing. We will deal with the wrongdoing. Thank you very much, Chair. That's how far we could go, but we still have 13 minutes to conclude. Is there anyone who feels his or her questions were not adequately answered? Check. Oh, bring it here. I think you are the only one <clears throat> as we check. move towards the closure. The, yes. the only remaining question is to National Cogta, um, whether they are considering intervention in terms of uh, Section 139 sub 7, which is uh, the case if the province fails in its duties. Uh, if we can get an answer from National Cogta whether that is being considered. Not, not general cooperation and support, but specifically that provision taking over the administration from the province. Thanks, Chair. DG Williamson, can you respond to this question? Yeah, good evening, Chairperson. On this particular question, I will ask uh, the DDG Timber to please respond as we had agreed. Thank you. Uh, DDG Fossi. Good, good, good evening, uh, Chair and the Honourable Member. Uh, at, 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 uh, Chair, as an official in the department, 
we, we, we are working with the, the province based on the current uh, intervention. We are participating in the work streams. Uh, at that level, we will also do everything in our power to ensure that we support and, and uh, we succeed in terms of the, the turnaround uh, of, of this municipality. Uh, the question of whether uh, we, we will go for a section 1397, that's a different matter, Chair, which uh, I cannot respond to at this level. But uh, at my level, we, we are working with, with the province. Uh, thanks, Chair. In essence, thus far, nothing has warranted the department to invoke the provision of 1397 because you are working together with the province. So those were the issues. I should think, uh, MEC, I like your commitment that you are still going to come to us to update us because the reality, things have not been well. And I think we must appreciate also the acknowledgement that um, the previous one was not done correctly. It takes leadership to admit. And you say, you have said that you take full responsibility on the matter. And then we want to appreciate you also having to come in person, but then as we've indicated, I should think uh, you said you, there was a slide that you prepared in terms of the key focus area of the various administrators. I think it's of interest to the committee to also know as we we'll continue to do oversight because I think we are all committed in making sure that uh, the municipality becomes functional because is the people on the ground that are suffering when uh, the political leadership uh, is failing to do what they're supposed to do because the AG has expressed it explicitly that uh, there's no leadership. There's no leadership there. There's no political leadership. There's no oversight. Uh, uh, I should hope you will be able to share with us in time, how far have you fared? What is it that the administration has then just achieved? I think because at the end of the day, we want to see results. And it's our wish as a committee that this intervention at Infulini must work. With these few words, I want to let us end here to thank And the MEC, the DG, the MEC, and the support staff, everybody, it's here, and team, including new members. I'm happy we didn't go beyond the allocated time tonight. So this is ongoing. We'll continue to engage. MEC, earlier during the day, we asked the team for you to also prepare a slide on the intervention in West Rand District Municipality. And we'll be looking forward uh, to have a briefing with you with the latest development with regard to the Twane uh, 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 Municipality. But like you said, I should think the Concord will be the final arbiter on this matter. But then how are you going to then to make sure at the same time while you are waiting for the Concord to take a decision, then how are you going to navigate to make sure that a uh, Twane doesn't regress? But I should think you have said the way forward, but I think we'll need to have a, a, a further briefing from you, time permitting if it's before the end of this term, but we'll be in constant uh, contact with you. We want to, to thank you for your time, this meeting gets adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Good night. Um, with regard to tomorrow's uh, meeting. Yes. Tomorrow, there's no.
committee meeting members. You must just attend plenary because uh, 